if you're not sure how to go from this to something like this, I have great news. In this week's episode of YouTube Art School, I'll show you the full process, the exact method that I use to create the sketch, then a clean line art, and then the final colored version. Let's get to it. All right, class is in session. Pay attention and pay the class fee of either one like or one sub for me to reveal my professional secrets. It's worth it. So I'll be drawing the character Momo from... And since she's often battling spirits and aliens, I'm planning to draw her in a dynamic pose as if she's about to get into a fight. So I'm starting with the construction for the character because I'm going for a... A lot of foreshortening here, and I want to make sure that I get my proportions right. I teach how to draw the human mannequin like this in another class that I'll link down below. But basically, I'm just using spheres and cylinders to block things in. And here, I'm drawing her as if we're looking up at her, like we're below. So I have all my shapes oriented away from us, right? Like, if this was a cylinder instead of this egg shape, it would look like this, with all the cross sections angled away from us, like pointing at the sky. And if there was no foreshortening, it would just look like that instead. But really the hard part here is her left arm and hand. So again, I'm going to draw those with simple shapes to get an idea of where I'm going. I always recommend my students practice drawing simple volumes in perspective to make this step much easier. And of course, it doesn't look that great yet. But we're just starting, so hold up. Because now that I have a rough block out, I can create a new layer and start to dress her up and detail the body parts that won't be covered by her outfit. Drawing folds is hard enough, but folds in perspective are even harder. So it really does help to have a layer with those underlying volumes to guide me. I have another class on drawing folds that I'll link down below, but if you're having difficulty figuring out how the folds, you know, should flow, well, you could just wear something similar, like a big sweater and use a photo of yourself in the same pose as the reference. That's gonna save you in a bunch of different situations. But here you can see that I'm following the curves of my cylinders underneath. And I'm just going to focus the folds where the two volumes meet, like around the inside of the elbow with the upper arm and the forearm cylinders, for example. And it also helps that I have the design of the character to go by. So I'm just going to try drawing her the same way, roughly, but adjusting her design elements to my dynamic pose. And obviously the hardest part here is the foreshortening. So I recommend that you start with an easier pose if you're gonna try this. It'll work great regardless of the drawing. I just wanted to stretch myself here a little bit and try something harder than usual. Now, I haven't been worrying too much about the quality of my lines because now that my sketch is done, it's time to clean things up. So I have an inking brush that I made a few months back that I find perfect for this step. It's the same one that I use whenever I use cell shading to render my drawings and I just added it to my free brush set that you can download with the link in the video description. It's got this nice texture to it so it doesn't look too digital. But yeah, once again, I'm just going to create a new layer and trace over this whole thing one more time, but focusing only on the line quality this time. You probably can't tell from just the screen recording, but when inking or just cleaning up a sketch, I always try to use fast brush strokes with my whole arm to get cleaner lines, rather than drawing from the wrist. The technique is a lot more important in this step since all those lines will end up in the final drawing, so we want them to look hot, deliberate, confident. Oh, also, when inking, line weight, meaning like how thick the lines are, is super important because thick lines attract more attention than thinner lines. Because of this, it's always a good idea to vary the line thickness depending on what it is that you're drawing. Like the hand in the foreground has slightly thicker outlines because it's closer to us than the rest of her body. But yeah, with a clean drawing now, we're ready to move on to the colors. Ooh, exciting. My first step will be to break up each of the different colors into their own layer. So I'll just, you know, lasso tool the section that I want and paint bucket in a flat color for each. At this point, it's always a good idea to share the progress for more engagement online. So I uploaded it to Twitter. And the colors I've chosen so far are just following the original design, but it's important for this method to work that we select mid-tones, AKA like colors that are not too bright or too dark. For my skin color, for example, this is the color that I've selected. And from there, I'll either go darker for the shadows to something like this, and use this one for the highlights, almost pure white. And you can pause this to color pick if needed. But yeah, before I start shading, let me just quickly go over my layer setup because this looks kind of scary, I'm sure. But it's actually super simple. Remember how we just split each of our colors onto their own layer? Well, what we'll do now is create three new layers on top of each that will then convert to clipping masks. Like this in Photoshop, 
or like that in Clip Studio Paint. And you can tell that it's a clipping mask now that it's turned red. And then back to Photoshop, instead, we get these little arrows, you know, to indicate that anything that we paint on these clipping masks, it will only be applied to that first normal layer directly below, like the layer it's pointing to. And we can see this if I try to paint on the first layer. Look at how the paint is only being applied to the skin in this case. Now, I like to color code these layers to help me navigate easier as I paint, because otherwise it'd be a complete mess. So that's why I'll have my base layers in red, the shadow layers in blue, the lighting layers in yellow, and the gradient layers that I'll go over in a moment in purple. And then I'll have my lines layer above it all in green. And that's the setup. Now we're ready to start rendering. So when cell shading, I'll always start with the shadows first. But for that, we need to know where the main light source will be coming from. So let's figure that out first. I think it might work great to have her be backlit. So like a light coming from this direction, maybe. This way, I can imagine the top of her hand will be lit up while the palm will be in the shadow. Might look cool, so let's go with that. Now, when painting shadows or highlights, I'll just use a hard brush with full opacity. The coloring style I'm going for here is my own version of cell shading, so that's why we don't want any smooth shading in here. I want this to look kind of like a better rendered still frame from the anime. Now, I'll tend to only paint in shadows for smaller details, like the cast shadows you see on the hair right there when something is in front, like blocking the light from something behind. Same thing with the earring over here, with its shadow cast on the face. And that's why we wanted to figure out where the light source was coming from first. And because the direction of the cast shadow depends on it. So now all we gotta do is repeat the same process for each of our different sections, painting the shadows for each, just focusing on the shadows though. Nothing else yet. And I know I'm going through this pretty quickly, but if it's too fast for you, or like if you need more help with your art, like a solid structure to your studies maybe, and an awesome art community to hang with and level up together, you should check out my complete art education program with the link in the video description. I've extended the five year anniversary sale until the end of this month, so you'll be able to grab it for yourself at a huge discount for a couple more days. I don't want you to miss out on this. All right, now once we have all our shadow layers done, it was starting to look pretty hot. Now it's time to move on to the gradients, our purple coated layers. We're gonna switch to a soft brush just for this step. So for each of our sections, again, the idea is that I'll want to break up any large flat surface by painting in a gradient. So the hair is a good example again here. See how boring this looks, but with a subtle gradient, now we get all this nice range of colors. Mm. And if you look at the hand too, I think the gradient or like the darker areas of the midtones help make it feel more foreshortened. Like we feel the depth better. Anyways, like I said, pretty subtle, but it looks better. At least I think. And now we're ready for my favorite part, the lighting or the yellow coated layers. Now all of my highlights will be almost white or like a super bright version of the midtones for each color. I like how dramatic that makes the lighting. And I love to add some outer glow in Photoshop to get this nice warm transition between the midtones and the highlights. See that there? Mmm, tasty. You could paint that transition in manually, I guess, but I ain't got time for that. So following the light direction that we settled on earlier, I'm just painting those highlights for each of the different sections one by one. And uh, we're back to using a hard brush for the step, as you can see. Now I'm winging this, but you've heard me mention the Magic Pose Web website before, and I would definitely recommend that you use it if you're not sure what the lighting should look like. It's a fantastic tool for lighting references, among other things. But yeah, would you look at that? It's coming along. We have the shadows, the gradients, and the highlights done, and we're just about to wrap this up. So there's just two more quick steps that we need to go over. For the first of the two, we'll create a new layer almost at the top of our stack, just right below the line art. And well, I'll use this to paint some blush, like, like the red of the lips, the highlights in the eyes, and like other minor finishing details, if needed. Usually it's needed. You can see it with and without here. Very subtle though. But yeah, for the second and final quick step, we'll be coloring the line art. So I don't like to keep it black all over. That's boring. Instead, we can lock the alpha for our line layer, the one still at the top of our stack. And this way we'll be able to draw over the lines with a different color. So usually I'll just use a darker variant of the shadow color for that specific region. So for the skin again, I'll use a dark brown, for example. You just wanna make sure that the line art is still the darkest color, just not black. And there we have it. So we started with the construction, the sketch, the line art, the base colors, the shadows, the gradients, highlights, makeup, and then the colored line art. And we're done. Woo 
Now you know the process. Why don't you give it a shot while you wait for next week's class? All right, bye.